Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. In this video, I'm going to be talking about Fadel Soliman. Now, for those of you who aren't aware, Fadel Soliman is an Iman, a sheikh, someone of knowledge who works for the Bridges Foundation, an Islamic Dawa Institute based in Cairo in Egypt. And he recently watched my debate with Sneeko at Speaker's Corner a few Sundays back. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Perfect. Alhamdulillah. And I didn't know that. So uh, my book was publicized in, uh, by non-Muslims in, uh, in Hyde Park. I think. Speaker's Corner, that's in your backyard there, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, but I, have, I don't go there usually. Now, Fadel Soliman went on to a popular YouTube channel, The Dean Show, to have a chat with Dean himself and to explain what he thought about what I was saying and how Sneeko should have reacted and to just give better understanding about his book, The Bridges Translation of the Ten Kala'at of the Noble Quran, and just how the Quran is in general. Is it one Quran? Is it ten Qurans? What does he have to say? Does Fidel Soliman say it's just dialects? Does he say actually it does change the meaning in roughly 30% of the Kalat? What does he think about my example of Maliki al Madin when it comes to Surah al Fatiha, the first Surah in the Quran, which has variants in it? You'd be surprised to, to know this, but, and I was pretty much guessing this would be the case, Fidel Soliman agrees with basically everything I said, with, within reason. I said that quoting his work, the Kila'at are different in meaning in many places. Not all places, but in many places. He agrees. I said that the Kila'at is not just dialects. He also agrees. So the second type of variation is what is embraced in my translation because it affects the meaning. And the non-Muslim brother actually gave a, gave a very good example of it. He said, for example, in Al-Fatiha, um, Malik Yawmiddin or Malik Yawmiddin. This one means owner and this one means, or uh, this one means uh, uh, king. Which one of them? It's both of them. And that's what he does not understand. That the ayah, the Quran is precise and at the same time uh, uh, concise. It's, it's brief. It's not a very big book like that. It would be hard for people to memorize it. It will lose even its, uh, its, its eloquence if it's too long and too. So some ayat can be read in two different modes. Each one of them gives a different meaning, but not one of them contradicts with the other. So if you want to know the meaning of this ayah, you have to put both layers above each other. So Allah is Malik and Malik Yawmiddin. Allah is the king and the owner. King gives the, uh, denotes authority, rule. And Malik denotes ownership. Not every king is the owner. Not every owner is a king. Allah is the owner and the one in authority and the, and the ruler. Understand me? So not every owner rules and not every ruler owns. So he is Malik and Malik at the same time. Great stuff. Loving this so far. So Fadel Solomon's main point, and I guess this is a contention and somewhat one of the only few main contentions that I have with him, is that he says, well, these different meanings can be reconciled because you can apply both. You, can, you just take whatever the different Kalaads say in terms of different verses and you just apply them. So for example, if there was a verse that said, Chris is excited, and that same verse in a different Qur'an said, Chris is scared, then the way you'd reconcile that according to Fidel Soliman is, Chris is excited and scared. You just apply and combine the meanings, and that's how you resolve any differences in meaning, which there are, as he said. Well, okay, but there are issues with that. And there are issues with that in a previous video that I pointed out, there are verses that do not seem to have reconcilable meanings because they are direct contradictions because they negate things. In other words, one verse will say something like Chris is excited and then they'll replace that with Chris is not excited. Okay, so which one is it, right? Are you gonna say both? He's both excited and he's both not excited. I don't think that works. I think that leads to absurdities. And to give you an example of this, I've quoted before, Surah 10, Ayat 16, where it says that Allah, Allah both informed someone of something and there is a Qur'at variant that says Allah did not inform them of that same something. I think that's a contradiction. I don't think that can be resolved. I would love to see Fidel Soliman's opinion on this. What I was really surprised at is Fidel Soliman 
said he'd love to meet me. The uh, person is saying, look, uh, these are ad hominem attacks. You're not addressing the point. We address the point now. Yeah. So now we're moving on to make a contrast just for better clarity and understanding. And so I would love you- to meet that non-Muslim if he's in London, actually. I'm in London. What? If I, I would love to meet that non-Muslim who appeared, actually. Because it looks like he's getting bits and pieces, but he's not having the real uh, picture. I mean, we want the best for him also. I mean, we want the best for everybody. This is uh, Islam. The Quran is a mercy and a guidance for all of mankind. He has a misunderstanding. He's not getting it right. And we got the person to help to unpackage this. So, Fadal Soleiman, if you're watching this, I would absolutely love the opportunity to have a conversation with you. I would relish the opportunity to speak with more scholars, especially about this topic, because it's a personal favorite of mine and something that I've been looking into Quite a bit. So if you're still in London, Fidel Soliman, let's meet up. Now, there is another point of congestion that I do disagree with him on. He, so first of all, let's watch this clip. Wow, this is, uh, like you said, mind blowing. So this is actually something that's more technical. And just to summarize, we have the seven dialects. So the seven dialects, and then you had the 10 modes of recitation. Yes. So we can say the seven dialects, can you say that this is like when you're in Britain, British English, English from USA, Texas English, even within the USA, um, hi, howdy, uh, things like this. That but now- these were abrogated. These were abrogated. There is no more, di- only one dialect now, the dialect of Quraysh. So the that- Ahrab are not there anymore. Prophet Muhammad himself who asked for it and he abrogated six of them and only one state. Now you have 10 modes of recitation. Exactly. This is still being applied today. Ex- of course. And so they, they are they were inside every half of the seven. Because if they give different meanings, so they were in every one of them. And now this is these 10 modes of recitation. This is like the elongation, how to maybe stretch, how to recite, and, and then the way you were explaining. Some of them are like that. Yes, yeah. some of them are like that. And some of them are grammatical, which have can be meaning. Okay. From what I understand, he's saying that the arrow of the seven different modes are just dialects. He holds the view that they are just dialects. Okay. We know the Aruf is not simply just a matter of different dialects because the Hadith tells us in a Sahih narration that two of the Sahaba, two of the companions of Muhammad, disagreed with each other about what was being recited, even though they both came from the same tribe, the tribe of Quraysh. We read, Sunan Nasai 936. Umar bin al Khattab, may Allah be blessed with him, said, I heard Hisham bin Hakim bin Hisam reciting Surah al Furqan in a way that the Prophet of Allah had not taught me. I said, Who taught you this surah? He said, The Messenger of Allah. I said, You are lying. The Messenger of Allah did not teach you like that. I took him by the hand and brought him to the Messenger of Allah and said, O Messenger of Allah, you taught me Surah al Furqan, but I heard this man reciting it in a way that you did not teach me. The Messenger of Allah said, Recite, O Hisham. So he recited it as he had recited it before. The Messenger of Allah said, It was revealed like this. Then he said, Recite, O Umar. So I recited it and he said, It was revealed like this. Then the Messenger of Allah said, The Quran was revealed to be recited in seven different modes. These modes cannot be dialects. If these modes were dialects, then Umar bin al khattab would not have had any issue with his fellow companion reciting this because they spoke the same dialect. <laughs> they both came from the tribe of Quraysh. Different clans from the tribe of, the, of Quraysh, but from the same tribe of Quraysh nonetheless. Whatever the Aruf are, because the scholarly opinion is not known what the Aruf is, there are many different opinions, many different understandings of the Aruf from a scholarly perspective, it cannot just be ways of pronouncing it can't just be like how americans say pants and we say trousers here in britain it can't be tomato tomato potato potato you you get my point it can't be any of those things because people of the same tribe who were companions of muhammad differed and i think that's sufficient to refute fidel soliman on that point i also think he would have difficulty explaining the kilaat if the aruf was just different dialects now Fidel Soliman affirms another thing I said, which is kind of my whole point when I was talking to Sneeko, actually, how I ended it. I said that the Aruf is gone. I said, we don't have the Aruf today. Like six out of the seven different Aruf have been lost today, which were recitations of the Quran we no longer have that were not preserved from the companions. Let's see what, let's see what Fidel Soliman has to say. Things like this that But now- these were abrogated. These were abrogated. There is no more, di- only one dialect now, the dialect of Quraysh. 
So the Ahrab are not there anymore. Prophet Muhammad himself who asked for it and he abrogated six of them and only one stayed. Fadal Suleiman agrees with me. He says, yeah, it's gone. Kaput. It's, it's left. <laughs> it's been completely destroyed, presumably by Uthman. So my contention there is, since this is the Quran, this is recitation that Muhammad gave of the Quran, Muhammad called it the Quran, Muhammad said there are seven different modes, seven different aruf of the Quran. Destroying six of them basically means that the companions destroyed the majority of the Quran. Even if you just say that that aruf is dialects, which I don't agree with, but let's say it is, it's still valid dialects. Muhammad gave it to you. Muhammad gave the early Sahaba different dialects, supposedly to recite, called the aruf. But then the later companions, 20 years after Muhammad died, decided to destroy them all. That to me kind of seems like you destroyed the majority of your Quran, even if it is just dialects. And Fadal Suleiman, that's his view. Uh, there are different scholarly views. Some scholars say that actually the Aruf is preserved. Dr. Yasser Qadi, for example, seems to be of the view that the Qur'at somehow finds its way back to the Aruf. But even then, he still says that it seems to be the only part of the Aruf is preserved, not all of it. Keep in mind, even if you do say this is dialects, scholars have to then ascribe the seven different Aruf to different tribes to figure out which dialect fits, fits where. And the Quraysh is there, maybe some tribe of Yemen is there. They list different Arabic tribes. The problem is no one agrees who those are. There's not even a consensus in scholarship in that theory as to which ones, which tribes are the ones to which these dialects that Aruf are supposedly revealed for. What I enjoyed most about the video was that Fidel Soliman, for the large part, agreed and confirmed what I said, which, you know, was always nice to hear. And to be fair, it'd be a bit weird if he didn't, given that I was quoting from his book. Uh, I'm not sure how he would have. <laughs> this Chris guy is wrong. He's quoting nonsense. By the way, please buy my book. <laughs> so I guess he had to sort of affirm that what I was saying was true. I would absolutely relish the opportunity to speak. If anyone can reach out to Fidel Soliman and tell him I am more than, uh, more than willing to have a discussion, that would be absolutely awesome. The rest of the video wasn't really relevant. Um, there was a lot of weird, just like throwing in of things. Like the Quran is, um, you know, has scientific miracles in it. You know, it affirms all the prophets. Jesus is a Muslim. Adam is a Muslim. That kind of thing. Uh, I'm not really interested in that for this context. I think it's just a, a red herring away from the actual topic of discussion, which is the preservation of the Quran and whether or not it's valid to say that the Quran have different meanings and hence there's different Qurans. Spoiler alert. Yes, there is. <laughs> if you've been watching the, the videos I've been putting out on this for, for the last few weeks, I think it should be clear now that, yeah, there are different Qurans. They do have different meanings in the Qur'at. The Qur'at is not just different dialects, and neither is that a roof either. I'm going to do some more videos ex expanding on this. There's a lot more stuff that I want to get out there, but for now, I have very limited time, very busy today. But I wanted to make this quick response because it's, it's part of what I enjoy doing the most is just investigating things and telling people the truth. To especially Muslims who have quite a naive idea. And me and Fidel Soleiman can agree on this. Most Muslims don't know about the Qur'at. Most Muslims don't know about the 10 different readings. Most Muslims don't know they, in about 30%, differ in meaning. So I and Fidel agree completely on that. I just wish that he would deal with the conflicting, contradictory readings. I think they're problematic. I think we actually do have a case of 10 different Qur'ans that are accepted by scholars. You could argue there's more, but I'm just going with, well, Islamic scholarship agrees on. As always, ladies and gentlemen, there is a better way that is not just leaving Islam and realizing that perhaps this is a little bit more, uh, a little bit more psychologically heavy for you to continue carrying as a burden. Trying to believe this one Quran when in, real, in reality there's actually more than one Quran, there's 10 Qurans with different meanings, but somehow it's just one Quran. Abandon that, but don't just leave it at nothing. This isn't a call to simply say, well, you found the truth now, now you should act on it. I'm saying, you found the truth, now find out where real truth is, like a positive truth. What actually is the case? I'm not making the case that Islam is wrong and that's it, end of story. I'm saying that there's another belief that you've missed, a belief that's hinted at in Islam, and that is the idea that there is a Messiah. There is a God that knows you and does love you, even as a disbeliever, who's always loved you and always known you. Come back to him, abandon false, irrational ideas, and instead embrace our Lord Jesus Christ, who is forever patient and forever loving. God bless you all. I hope you have a great day. Fidel Soliman, and to the rest of you as well, have an awesome day. God bless you. Take care.